Hey everyone, in this quick video I'm going to show you what the difference is between these two checkboxes you see right here, add a breakpoint in debug mode and disable workflow. They're actually very different things, but a couple of people have gotten confused by them and they've asked me what the difference is. So disabling a workflow, when you have this checked, you can see that the event gets um, kind of faded out like that. That just means it's, it's pretty literal. Um, Bubble will not run this workflow while this is disabled. This is really handy for um, if you're testing some things out. Let's say I wanted this submit button, um, you know, I created this sequence of actions, but maybe I wanted to test something out that's different. And instead of, you know, uh, adjusting my existing sequence, I don't want to mess that up. I want to keep that saved somewhere. I'll create a duplicate by copying and pasting that and the other one will not be disabled. So when I click that button, it's only going to run the enabled workflow sequence and this one will just be ignored. So this is really just a great way to hang on to stuff so that you don't delete them um, while you're building if you're troubleshooting, very handy that way. Um, the add breakpoint in debug mode. So if you're, if you're familiar with the debugger, I'm gonna run this page here so you can see it with the debug mode on. Um, we'll wait till it comes up down here. So if you're familiar with the debugger, you have a couple options. You can run your page in a normal mode, which doesn't really involve the debugger in any way. Um, or you can run it in a slow mode, which will pause your entire page um, uh, it'll slow it down. It'll keep running, um, but it'll slow it down so you have a moment to view what's going on um, with the workflow. Or you can select a step-by-step. -step. I'll select this here and click on this button. Um, and it'll allow you to review every single action um, you know, for as long as you want, only until you hit the Run Next button will it move on to the next action. Okay, but normally when you click this, when you use the debugger like this, it's going to go through every single action with this setting that you've um, applied here. Or if you do run slow, it's going to go through every single action in that slow motion type of mode. What this breakpoint in the debug mode means is that you can run your sequence of actions at normal speed, but when it hits uh, let's say for example here, let's say I'm on step three and I turn on the breakpoint here. When it hits step three, it will stop and pull up the debugger so that you can review it. This is really handy if you have, you know, a bunch of actions here and you know you want to go through, um, you know, the first 10 or 12 actions at normal speed because you're not concerned about those. You're really wanting to use the debugger on an action that's much further down the line. This is very handy for that so that you stop at that point only. And you can do, you can add a breakpoint to multiple actions, of course, um, but this is just a way to give you a little bit more control about when the, debu the debugger actually comes into play. You can also add a breakpoint um, to entire uh, workflow events as well. So you do see that this is up here too. Add breakpoint in debug mode um, just so that the debugger comes up the moment that this event is triggered. So hopefully that, that makes sense, the difference between those two. They're both very handy um, when you're troubleshooting your application. If you wanna get more tips just like this, I have a free download over on my site. Just click the link in the description below and you can download the guide for free. Thanks so much for watching.